everybody. Welcome to Julia in the Garden. I'm Julia. This video is actually going to be a seed haul. I'm really excited to share with you what I got this year. I am in Vermont in zone five and these seeds are mostly for my potager or kitchen garden but there's some for my orchard and some other spots that I'm working on around the property. So last year, if you see my seed haul, and I will link it here, I went through all of the seeds I was planting. I had one for the kitchen garden and then one on just flowers. Um, but this year, I didn't get quite as many seeds, although I did still get quite a few. And I'm not going to show you all of the seeds I'm planting, just the ones I got. And I decided this year also to organize it by category of seed instead of company. I'm showing you seeds from seven different companies. I will link to all of their websites below. I prefer to order from companies that are local and or regional to me. And so I have several of those that I will highlight um, that are in this Northeast area. And then um, there's a few companies that I love that are a little bit farther away. And then of course I, I did a Baker Creek order. Now that you know where all these seeds are coming from, let me dive in. I'm gonna start with onions because that's the thing I'm going to be starting inside first. Um, I got all of my onion seeds from Fedco this year. And I got three varieties. I got New York Early Onion, Dakota Tears, this is New York Early, uh, Dakota Tears, um, which is one of the varieties I grew this year as well. And I got a Rosa di Milano Onion. Ah. So we're gonna try again with the onions. I did grow them last year. I'm hoping to do some things to try to make them a bit bigger this year. So onions. Peas are something, so I have seeds for sugar snap peas, which I've been growing, and basically they're just a garden snack for me, but I realized I didn't have, um, I didn't have really shelling peas that I was like harvesting for like shelling and peas, and um, we do like eating peas actually, especially during the winter, so I would like to be able to harvest enough peas to blanch and freeze them, so um, I got several varieties after doing some research. Um, this one's from Fruition Seeds, it's a dwarf shell pea. Laxton's progress number nine and so it's supposed to be a shorter plant. I think I'm still going to put it um, on a fence though to trellis it up. Um, Maxi Gold is supposed to be really big and prolific and um, this is Emerald Archer Pea and this was described in their catalog as I think they said their like young grandson really liked this pea and harvesting it and so with that description and the named em Emerald Archer I decided to go for it. So between those three, we'll see what we like and hopefully get some to freeze. So I talked about peas. I will move on to beans. That was another category um, that where I, I replenished and also got some new ones. So I've got a couple packets of this runner bean black coat because I really like this bean and I ran out and so I got two because they're pretty big. Um, there's not a lot in each packet. So black coat runner bean. I also got this chocolate runner pole bean and um, it just, it has these, I don't know if you can see from the picture, but look at the beans. They're like speckled and lavender and apparently the flowers are gorgeous and loved by um, pollinators and everything. So I thought I'd try these. I might actually try planting these and maybe also some of the black coat in the um, orchard on some trellises. I'm hoping to build some like trellises out of uh, branches to, to grow those, um, which would be good for the soil and for pollinators. I used up all of my um, seeds for my uh, green bean bush beans, and they were a couple years old. And so I actually decided this year to try pole green beans. Um, so I got two different varieties. This is Seychelles or Seychelles, um, and it's supposed to be prolific. And this is an em emerite or emerite pole bean, and these are like a filet, like the French style thinner. Um, so we're going to try those two varieties. Um, we like green beans, so I'm hoping to harvest some this year. Um, and then these are varieties. This one I tried to grow last year. And again, just we just had a really bad year for beans. I don't think it was the fault of any one variety or company. It was just so dry and it was just, it was rough. So I'm going to try this again, red swan bush beans. Last year I got the art pack, but since I already had the outside of that, I just got the regular packets this year. Um, uh, from from Hudson Valley Seeds. And then for Dragon Tongues beans, I needed some more of these. And so I did get the art pack for these ones. Cucumbers were something I wanted to try something new in. So in the past, I've last year, um, I grew some older seeds that I had. I grew Boston Pickling and those seeds were several years old and they, they germinated and everything. But 
Um, I just wasn't really impressed and I also tried to grow a dragon's egg cucumber last time and I think I got a few more of the dragon's eggs but I decided I just for what we use it for um, or for what I want to use it for I tried, decided to go with something else. So we do occasionally use a slicer cucumber but not as often as we do pickles. So I got one slicer cucumber and I got silver slicer um, which are like they're the whiter ones and I don't know they just seemed really cool so I I was like, I'll, I'll try those. And then to kind of go with that, I also got the salt and pepper pickling cucumber. And this is the one I'm most excited about. Um, Petra at Fruition Seeds loves this one and has gone on about it. And I'm hoping to make some pickles with this. And then I also got national pick, pickling cucumber because I wanted to have more than one um, type to try for pickles. So those are my cucumbers. Um, and this is another art pack from Hudson Valley Seeds. It's just beautiful. Beautiful. All right, some other random things. Let's go here. So this is a Helenor rutabaga from High Mowing. I will try to put a picture in here. Um, I've grown, uh, I don't remember the name of the rutabaga. I've grown the same one for the last few years. It was fine. Um, I just decided to try a new one. I like the description of this in the catalog. So with that, um, I'm trying honey nut squash. So I love squashes and I still have a lot of seeds from pumpkins and squashes. So I will be growing a lot of varieties. So I tried to make myself not get new squash but i did really want to try the honey nut they're like little personal sized butternut squashes and apparently really sweet so honey nut squash mexican sour gherkin also known as cuca melon so we did try these last year as well and again problems but i'm really excited to try them again um i got the art pack last year but this year i did not but i'm really excited they're like this big i got uh, a new packet of aunt molly's ground cherries um, so I wasn't sure if I had many any seeds left for this from last year. We really liked it last year. We grew this. Um, and then I also decided to try Fruition Seeds um, Cossack's Pineapple Ground Cherry, which is more of a pineapple flavor. So I'm going to grow both and see what we think and see if we can taste the difference. Um, and I'm going to grow these, I think, in the potager and in the orchard. Um, like I've said, I think everything else that I have mentioned so far is going to be in the potager. Um, I think most of the stuff that's going in the orchard are herbs and flowers, so I'll get there. Um, but these these might also go in the berry garden. Maybe not the orchard, maybe the berry garden, some other areas on both sides. I told myself that I shouldn't get new tomatoes, but I didn't listen. I didn't listen to myself. But okay, let me start. Most of these tomatoes, okay, half of these tomatoes are ones that we just love that I need new seeds for. So this is Dr. Weich's. This is probably my daughter's absolute favorite tomato, the sunrise bumblebee, and blue cream berries that I grew for the first time last year and were my favorite. They're really mild and sweet. Um, all these are kind of on the sweeter, milder side because they're the yellow ones. Um, for some reason, I really like yellow ones, then I like like the purpley, smoky ones. I don't know why. I decided to try indigo apple tomato from High Mowing. It looked so cool. It gets like a really dark outside. I'm kind of like the blue berries, um, cherry ones. And, um, but it looked like it could get even darker. And um, that was really intriguing to me. So I'm gonna try this one. And then um, I got a new red cherry tomato to try. We've been growing, um, what is the red? Chadwick cherry. And it was fine, but I was kind of like, meh. And so I thought maybe I would try a different red cherry tomato to see if I liked it. And so um, this is Chiapas. Apparently it's like a slightly different um, species than other tomatoes. Um, and yeah, it's, it's like resistant to late and early blight, although we don't really have that problem here because we got lots of wind, but, um, yeah, I thought that would be cool. Too. So we're going to try that one. And then this just sounded so cool. So this is a paste tomato from Vesuvius, Pianolo del Vesuvio. And this picture here is shown them like hanging them. Um, apparently they keep really well just hung in these bunches. I just, I, it's from Vesuvius. I couldn't resist. Okay, so but but I did limit myself. <laughs> so and I am going to be growing fewer tomatoes overall this year. I'll get to that more in my garden plan, which is going to be the next video I do for you. I think we've got herbs and flowers next. So let me go through the herbs first because I have fewer of them. So these three are um, the seeds I got from Strictly, Strictly Medicinal Seeds, and um, this one's plantain. And this one's dandelion. And the last one is St. John's wort. And St. John's wort might be more like you, that doesn't just grow naturally around here. And so that I want to plant that in my herb circle. And um, I want to be able to harvest the flowers to make a an oil. Um, 
So that's that. These might seem like a little bit of a weird thing to plant because they do grow wild around here, but I want to have some patches where I can harvest them and know that they're not being stepped on and that also they're not in like the bed of something else. Like the dandelions really invaded the onions this past year. Um, and I'm also, they're, they're also um, two of the herbs featured in the Herb Fairy program by Learning Herbs, I think it's called. So I will have that link below as well. We love that program, my kids and I. And so I am starting an Herb Fairy bed area. It's actually two beds, two Herb Fairy beds um, where I'm going to try to have most of the herbs in Herb Fairies in those beds. There's a couple of things I can't grow, like cinnamon. Um, <laughs> but um, plantain and dandelion are two of the Herb Fairies, so they'll be in those beds. Chamomile, I love, and I was just out of out of seeds for it. So I got the art pack from um, Hudson Valley. Chives, I want to put in my orchard and be able to eat them. So there's that. Um, I got this green sleeves dill, and this is not, this is supposed to be one that doesn't bolt as quickly. So I have bouquet dill that I grew last year, and it's beautiful. Um, and the, the, I mean, it's just, it flowered really fast and I'd like to see if I can get more of the leaves. So I'm going to grow both, um, see if I can make that work. Um, summer savory, it just was one of those things I saw in fruition and I thought that's an herb. I don't know. I'm going to try that. Um, Tulsi basil. I'm also hoping to fit in my herb circle that and St. John's where hopefully will both fit. Um, this is going to be an annual for me here. I'm almost certain some places it's a perennial and it's um, used for tea a lot of time. It doesn't not, it doesn't really taste like other basils. I don't really use it like in cooking, but mainly to dry for tea. And I know my um, my parents really like it. So if I grow extra, I will give it to them. So I've got borage because I was also out of that, those seeds and I love borage. And this is going in my herb garden. But also it's edible flowers and um, I'll also be sticking it in the orchard and specifically in the pollinator area. Pollinators love borage. And Baker Creek had white borage this year, so I decided to try that. And then um, basil. Last year I went crazy with the basils. Um, this year I think um, I'll get to it. One of the flowers. Uh, I think is, is where I went like a little crazy. I'm getting a lot of different varieties. Um, but this year I'm still going to grow several varieties, but I'm going to grow a lot more of just like the Genovese to get for pesto. Um, and then the other thing was the Thai sweet basil. My kids loved the Thai sweet basil. They just were eating it all in the garden. So I'm going to have to grow a patch of that for them. I'm going to move on to the flowers next. And I haven't actually gotten my florette order in, but I, I have what I've ordered, so I'm going to tell you about it as I go. Um, and then I also have my kids, I, I let each of my uh, older kids, my two older kids, pick out some seeds for their gardens from Baker Creek this year. So um, I'm, we will show you those um, at the end as well. I think the category that I bought the most varieties in this year was nasturtium for some reason. I just want a lot of nasturtium and I already had some, um, but I apparently wanted more. So <laughs> I got this variegated nasturtium from, or variegated? Yeah, variegated. Um, from Hudson Valley Seed Company. It has like its, its leaves are variegated. So I thought that was really cool. Um, from uh, Fedco, I got this tall climbing nasturtium mix. I thought there'd be, it'd be fun to have some places where the nasturtium was climbing up. Maybe some of the other climbing plants like the cucamelons. I got an Alaska mix. It's just all sorts of kind of fun, bright colors. Um, this one and the next one, Yeti and Orchid Cream, are both ones I've grown in the past that I liked. So um, I need to get more seeds in those. And I actually think I, I got I got two packets of Orchid Cream because I liked it so much. And then I'm most excited about these two. Okay, you ready? Purple Emperor and Cherry Rose Jewel. Aren't those just beautiful? I just, I think they're gorgeous. So I'm really excited about those. I'm hoping to grow a bunch of nasturtium around my quince tree in the garden, in the potager, as well as along the ed outside edge of the garden near the driveway. So we'll see. And I probably will throw some in the orchard and in other places as well. So I got, I have plenty now. I don't know why I got a lot of flowers this year. I did. I got a lot of flowers last year too. I like flowers. 
Okay, I got a couple new Snapdragon seeds to, to go with the ones I had already. Um, this is Rembrandt Snapdragon, which is like an orangey color. Like, here, I'm gonna show you the picture on the back here if I can. Oh, glare. Um, also, Art Pack, gorgeous. And a Snapdragon mix um, that looks like it's like got deeper purples and pinks and whites um, in it. So, the, that, ah, so beautiful. So, more Snapdragons. Um, I got Morning Glory and Moonflower to try this year. I am hoping to grow these in the middle of the berry garden on a trellis. Um, and possibly, we'll see how it goes. I might try to make an arbor to go outside one of the garden gates and might grow one of these there, but I might grow something else instead. We'll see. But I love vining flowers, so I just needed to try them and I need to find more spots to put them. From Fedco, I'll have to put the pictures in for you. This is Forget Me Nots. Um, not the Chinese, just like the native ones. I'm going to spread in some random areas. <laughs> and then, um, yeah, these are a couple of Cosmos. So there's Cranberries, Double Clicks, Double Click Mix Cosmos. Um, I already have like the mix of Double Click Cosmos, but this one's just cranberry color. Um, Cupcakes Cosmos. Oh my goodness. They're like little cups. and Like they're, they look so pretty. Um, and Pico Tea, which I believe is like the, I believe it's like bi-color, like a light and a really deep pink or magenta color. So the picture here will show you and then you'll know better than me. <laughs> From Fruition Seeds, Scabiosa Merlot Red. Isn't that a gorgeous color? These are supposed to be really good for pollinators. So these are going to go in the pollinator garden and possibly elsewhere. I haven't decided yet. Organic bronze fennel. Okay, so technically this is an herb, not a flower, but I am growing it for use of pollinators. It's an insectary um, specifically for the um, swallowtail butterflies, I believe. And so, um, yes, it's going to be going in my pollinator garden. Um, I think I'm just going to try to grow one this year because I think it gets pretty big. Okay, I grew, these were one of my favorites I grew last year. So I got some more apricot lemonade cosmos. I got some more cherry caramel phlox. Um, I got, this is Double Dutch Rose Cosmos, which also looked gorgeous. Um, oh, I grew these last year as well um, in the berry garden, but they didn't really do well, again, because it was so dry probably. Um, but I got some of the Queen Lime series again. Um, the, the red, orange, and the blush. I didn't get the, the lime, I guess the green. Um, but yeah, so growing those. I am hoping to grow zinnias all along the uh, outside of my potager that's facing the house. So um, I, I have a lot of varieties, but I want to make sure I have these. And then bunny ears viola. How cute are those? Those are so cute. Okay. And then uh, some sunflowers. So this is Hella Sana Bloom. I'm not sure if I'm saying that right. Um, it's, I think it's supposed to be a shorter one. It's like a dwarf sunflower. Um, that'll go well. I love the teddy bear sunflowers. I still have seeds for those. Um, those ones are like all yellow and kind of fluffy. So I thought these would go well with them. And then this is sunflower surprise. So it's just a mix. Um, and these will probably, most of the sunflowers, I might try to stick some of the dwarf ones in the garden, in the potager. But um, I'm hoping to be able to do a like sunflower ring or like almost ring for my kids up in their play area and also possibly it's like last priority but hoping to be able to do a bed of um just like where I throw flower seeds like sunflowers and zinnias and cosmos and stuff in there um behind where our basketball court is so um that's where I'm thinking these will go in those two places okay let me tell you about what I got from Florette and then we'll move on to my kids uh, seeds so um I got a Snapdragon Costa Summer Lavender. I got two different kinds of sunflowers. I got Sunflower Pro Cut White and Sunflower Ruby, yes, Sunflower Ruby Eclipse. Um, again, they just looked really pretty. Um, and so they'll be grown out by my kids or I might grow those two separately somewhere. I will find a spot for them. Um, I got Cosmos Purity. It's a white Cosmos. I just thought it was really like kind of romantic and pretty looking. Panza Viola Gem Apricot. I love all of the pansies and violas I got from Florette last year. And I have a couple seeds left of each. Unfortunately, several of them are now, um, looks like they've been discontinued and 
Um, most of them were out of stock by the time I ordered. So I got that one and um, I'm excited about those. And then I got three zinnias. So I got another package of unicorn mix because my daughter and I grew those last year and loved them. And so I wanted to get more. I got um, zinnia mazurkia. Um, I don't know how to describe it. So I'm going to put a picture here. It just was really intriguing to me. So I got that one. And then I got zinnia little flower girl mix. And I just thought these were so cute. And having a little girl who's going to be turning two this summer, I just like imagine like giving her a bouquet of those. I think that's everything from Florette. I'm going to go ahead and show you my son's seeds that he picked out this year. Now, he has decided for his little section of garden that he's going to focus on peppers and pansies. <laughs> no, it's kind of a fun, fun combination. He um, already has black pansies growing in there and he might grow some more. Um, we got this celestial blue pepper, so he'll have blue and he'll have black, which are his favorite colors. And then the rest of these are peppers. <laughs> There's... Uh, Zulu, which again, he loves black. And so that's why that's there. Um, mini bell mix. I just thought these were really cute. I pointed that out to him. He also likes little things. So there's that. Um, Lesia. It's supposed to be the sweetest. I should, I should say all of his peppers are sweet peppers because, um, my family members in particular, <laughs> I'm the, I'm the only one that sort of likes spicy things, but they're not my favorite. So, um, they don't like spicy things at all. So we only grow sweet peppers here. Um, so this is Lesia and Puma. Now, he is really excited to grow all these peppers. I need some recipes. So if you have any good pepper recipes, especially for some of these smaller ones, because the only ones I know of are like, you know, I can make stuffed pepper peppers and the bigger bell peppers. And then otherwise, I just like saute them with onions to the beginning of a bunch of different like Italian meals. But um, if you have any others that are good for using, especially like these smaller, sweet ones, new things to try, please, please let me know. I would love to know. So these are his seeds. Okay. So this is my oldest daughter and she is going to be doing flowers in her garden this year, right? Mm -hmm. Just a flower garden. And she wanted to show you some of her new seeds. She has some older seeds too. So we'll see what she decides to put in. But these are the new ones she got from Baker Creek this year. This is bachelor button. It's a mix, right? Mm -hmm. I, like, like it? I like it because it has all the different colors. Nice. I think this is Pollux? <laughs> Flox. Flox. Yeah, it's tricky with the pH. Okay. Sound, huh? okay. <laughs> That's a Twinkles Dwarf mix. I like it because it has, has a bunch of colors and I like that they all go together. And this is Aster, I think. Yeah, it's Aster. Mm -hmm. I like the light color. I think it goes nice with the yellow middle. Okay, this one there's not a picture for, but yeah. I can insert a picture. Yeah, I don't do I don't. This is a double Dutch Rose Cosmos. I oh. actually got one too, so they've seen it already once. It's this pink. Is, oh, I like that. That's probably why I chose it. <laughs> the reason. And these are stocks? Yep. Okay. That's any time mix of stocks. And I like it because of the colors. I like it. Actually, I do really like that. <laughs> Sorry, You're remembering what you just remembering what you got. Yeah. Yeah. Because <laughs> I actually seen them. And this is Zinnia Queen Lime Red. Red. I like the color. I, like, I actually picked out all of these because of the color. Zinnia Queen Lime Blush. Zinnia Queen Lime Orange. Zinnia Queen Lime. Lime. And Pandy's Bunny Ears. Bunny, Bunny Ears Violet, I think. Yeah, Viola, yeah. I like it. It's cute. They yeah. are really cute. I got those ones oh. too. So we cute. got some of the same ones. Thank you for sharing that much, kid. <laughs> Thank you for joining me in this video. Uh, if you liked it, please give it a thumbs up below to let YouTube know that you liked it. And subscribe if you haven't already. 
I've got so many ideas for videos coming out. So I'm going to be doing some garden planning videos for you, showing you my seed starting schedule and more. But right now I'm gonna go put all these seeds away in their storage bin. So happy gardening, friends. Mm -hmm.